Hello, my name is Joe Losey from the University of Pittsburgh and the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. I've been asked to discuss three articles that address the outcomes in cleft lip and palate in adopted children. The first article was published in June of 2014 by Dr. Mulliken from Boston and looked at the outcomes of 55 internationally adopted children with unrepaired cleft palate. The mean age of the two-flap palatoplasty um, uh, with an IVVP was 24 months. Fistula rates were 9% and VPI rates were 49%. And these were independent of cleft type. The rates were significantly higher. Fistula and VPI rates were higher than in a controlled non-adoptive uh, population. And the authors concluded that VPI was associated with an increased age at palatoplasty and that fistulas may be because of an infection um, uh, housed in the intraoral cavity and that children should be screened for intraoral infections. They also recommended that for kids that were adopted with unrepaired lips and palates that the palate should be repaired first followed by a lip adhesion and then delayed cleft lip repair. The second article in August of 2014 by Gruss and Hopper from Seattle, they looked at 216 internationally adopted children with cleft lip and palate, and these were performed at an older age as well. They found that adopted children had higher rates of secondary surgery, 64%, fistula, 34%, and VPI, 48%, and this was regardless of where the surgery was performed. Pre-adoption or post-adoption, so when the authors perform the surgery themselves at their institution, the rates of VPI, fistula, and secondary revision were higher when compared to a cohort of non-adoptives. They postulated, again, that age may be a factor in malnutrition or ethnic variations as well. And despite these findings, the authors um, still recommended cleft lip be, be performed first, followed by cleft palate. The third article to be published in December of 2014 is by Goldstein, Dufresne, and Baker, and they looked at their experience with 109 adoptives with clefts. Their repairs as well were performed usually at an older age, and they found an unusually high rate of fistula, secondary lip surgery, and VPI rates that did not differ between the adoptees that were repaired pre-adoption versus those that were repaired by the authors post-adoption in the United States. And the authors tried to compare a control group of their own non-adopted uh, children repaired by the authors, but because of small cohort groups, uh, there was no statistical significance obtained. The authors postulate again that age may be a factor, or maybe because they're older with increased motor skills. They recommend that after nutritionally optimized, the cleft palate be repaired first, as Dr. Mulliken did, sometimes with a lip adhesion if necessary, followed by delayed secondary cleft lip repair. And they counsel parents that it's important to let them know of increased complication rates. Their conclusions were worst outcomes were likely due to interventions being performed at a less than ideal time, suggesting that surgical training and resources are less important than timing of the repair. So my take home message from these three uh, reports are that all the centers found higher rates of secondary surgery being needed, fistula rates, and VPI in adopted children. And they all postulate that it had something to do with age. So we should take home the following message, that when counseling parents and families with adopted children, we should warn them of a greater potential risk for secondary complications. Thank you.